Thanks a lot. Um, I just found that last presentation really inspiring. Um, and uh, so I'll, I'll just start off with uh, a quick story uh, from when I was 11. And so when I was 11, I grew up in, I grew up in Boston. And uh, I distinctly remember one night, and it was so cold that night. And it was one of those nights where the stars are shining so brightly because it's so cold. And I distinctly remember that night saying to myself, uh, one day I'm gonna go up there, up to space. 11, um, probably a common dream for uh, 11 year olds. But uh, I wanna talk to you a little bit about why I think that is important and why I think we're living in the tipping point for space right now and why that matters for the world. Um, so we've got this amazing screen here today and um, before I get going, I just thought we'd enjoy a little bit of the amazing imagery that NASA has brought back. So as many of you know, um, last year we visited Pluto. Uh, we found a heart uh, on Pluto, which was pretty cool. And um, then recently we visited uh, Jupiter. Uh, we just sent a probe uh, in orbit around Jupiter. Um, and, uh, and Mars, we now have five probes around uh, Mars right now, and two robots on the surface. Um, no Mark Watney yet, but uh, Elon's working on that. And, uh, and then we have a probe on Saturn and, and uh, Ceres, and uh, uh, a uh, member of the asteroid belt. What's amazing now is that we're living through an incredible golden age of space exploration. And you and I all get a chance to participate, that, participate in that. But when I see these amazing images of uh, other planets, for me, I fall in love more uh, with our home planet, uh, Earth. And that is really what I want to talk to you about today, the connection between space and Earth. So, um, when we get right down to it, um, the experience of spaceflight is something that changes you uh, at a fundamental level. And it doesn't just change the people who go, it changes the people who have that experience of seeing what other people experience. This started in the Apollo program when the Apollo astronauts took pictures of the whole Earth and they sent those pictures back. And that was a moment when we all realized about the incredible sort of all-natural, elegantly designed spaceship that is planet Earth that protects every man, woman, child, plant, and animal that we all happen to be living on. And that consciousness is something that I think is truly important to the next phase, uh, the next century of time as we work through our biggest challenges together. Um, we're gonna have, uh, we need that planetary perspective. And so the question is how do we bring that more widely? And the challenge is that very few people are actually able to experience this uh, today. Um, so let's talk about what we're doing to, to uh, change that. So, so far there have been about 100 billion people who've ever lived. And uh, only 500 or so have actually ever been to space, and I think that's a crazily small number. Um, I love this screen, by the way, it's pretty amazing. Um, but uh, it's not just that a very few people have actually been to space, it's who's been to space. So it's been about 90% male, not very representative. Um, it's been only from about a quarter of the world's countries, so not that many people from different nations have, have been. And, and more than that, if you're too big or too small or too short or too fat or whatever, um, you historically have not been able to have that experience. And we think that that's something that uh, can, and should, can and should change. Um, and so, now, what's really nuts is that we're actually not flying to space as much as we used to. And why is that? It's because we retired something called uh, the space shuttle. And since we've got this enormous screen, I thought it'd be cool just to watch a space shuttle launch. 15, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, start, start, 2, 1, boost to ignition and liftoff of the space shuttle discovery, returning to the space station, taking away from future missions beyond. That 
that's awesome. I don't, you know, just uh, go, go NASA. So, um, uh, but we retired the space shuttle for really good reasons. And um, I said, what, what comes next? How do we inspire the next generation? And so I want to introduce you to this vehicle. And it's called Spaceship One. And it was flown in 2004. And it's actually the only private spacecraft to ever take people into space. Um, in fact, there's only four organizations that have ever taken people into space. The US government, uh, the Russian government, and the Chinese government, and the team behind uh, this vehicle here. So basically, it carries uh, spaceship one up to altitude and then it releases it and it goes up into space from there and this was essentially a prototype or a demonstration and it wasn't just an engineering demonstration it was also a demonstration of a concept and that concept was that a small team can do big things in space and not just big things in space but big things in general this was almost a, a, an affirmation that small teams of people can do incredible things together that you don't have to have an entire government you don't have to have world governments coming together to do big things, you can actually do them as part of small teams. And, and so what we did was we, we said, this is something that's really exciting. This can help expand the realm of what's possible. And Richard Branson, in his, uh, in his wisdom, decided that he was going to take this and turn this into something that could expand the opportunity for going into space dramatically. And so what I wanted to introduce you to now is Spaceship Two. And um, that is our commercial vehicle that we'll be using to take people into space. And uh, we recently unveiled uh, the new Spaceship Two at an event uh, earlier this year in, in Mojave. And then on Friday, we got our uh, commercial operating license to uh, start operating this vehicle, uh, which, will be, uh, which will be really exciting uh, as we go through test flight over the coming um, months. Now, what is Spaceship Two? It's, it's a vehicle that will carry up to six people into space, and uh, it'll, it'll open up the opportunity for dramatically more people to be able to go uh, up. And that's something that I think is really important. The customers that we have are, are sort of the early adopters, and we already have more people who are signed up than the total number of people who have ever been to space. And why is that important? It's important because these are the people who will be the ones at the vanguard who are actually making this thing possible. So since we had the opportunity to sh see the space shuttle, why don't we see a little footage um, from Spaceship Two in flight. So basically, you come off and uh, your rocket motor ignites behind you, and you'll feel the force of four to five Gs pressing you into your seat, and you'll begin something that we call the gamma turn. You can see it starting to shoot up into uh, space, and that will keep firing uh, for a while. This is a sort of a shorter burn, but once that rocket motor uh, turns off, then you'll instantly feel weightless, and you'll be able to float out of your seat, can take off your seatbelt, and uh, you have a space seatbelt, but it's still a seatbelt. And uh, you'll be able to look out the window, and you'll see, uh, just as you see there, um, planet Earth uh, behind you. And um, I, I fundamentally think that um, if you look out at the biggest problems that we have uh, today, whether they are in um, environment or in peace or in various other aspects of, um, of our planet. It's that planetary perspective, that concept that we all live on one spaceship together, that is truly one of the core ideas that we need to pass to the next generation, because that is sort of the, the, the environment that we, can, that we sort of frame the next century in, that, that idea that we're in this together, and that all of our actions are interconnected. And I think that this, um, I hope that as we fly more people to space, as we bring more and more people to space, and as we engage in other ways to allow people to have that space perspective, that will sort of permeate through our society in a way that is useful to actually being able to, to solve our, our, our most challenging issues. Now, I just want to share one last sort of thought with you, uh, which is that we are uh, working on some other programs, and uh, what we really hope to do, we're going to be launching small satellites, and, and uh, Richard Branson, um, I don't know how many of you know Richard, but uh, he's, he's an incredible um, dynamic force in the world, and he comes up with 
ideas that are um, amazing. We're going to be, uh, he came up with the idea to, to launch small satellites into, into space. And what's interesting about this is that, um, by the way, that's sort of actual size, which is cool. Um, what's interesting about this is that finally the advances in electronics and cell phones are starting to come to space. And so that means that space is finally in the realm of smaller teams. And uh, so satellites used to be sort of the size of school buses, and now they're the size of small, uh, small things like the size of a toaster. And what that means is that the capabilities that used to be in the hands of governments and large organizations can now be brought to bear on problems by organizations like schools or venture-backed companies or even crowdsourced, uh, crowdsourced ventures. And that's enormously pow powerful because the perspective of space is going to be crucial to solving some of those huge challenges, whether they're at the school level or at the national level or in between. The UN recently did a study and they were looking at the sustainable development goals um, that are sort of the, the biggest challenges that we face as a world civilization. And they found that about 70% of those will be able to be addressed by space. And more fundamentally, virtually all of them can be measured by space. And so, you know, what you can't uh, measure, you can't really work on. And, and so I think that if you're not thinking about how space can connect with your business or with your project, it might be something that you start to think about. Because um, what's, what's possible now is to, is to leverage that power that used to be in the hands of governments, whether it's through GPS or weather prediction, disaster response, communications, medical technologies, and you can now bring that power to bear on your own projects in a way that has never been possible before. Literally things that used to cost billions of dollars, tens of billions of dollars, are now in the hands of people for tens of thousands of dollars. And that's an incredible time to be alive. So when I grew up, I started, you know, becoming inspired because of these amazing visions of, um, of science fiction, and, and uh, you know, back then it was Isaac Asimov, now it's Mark Watney. But, uh, you know, those ideas that are so, ex so important to inspiring our kids and to get them to be thinking about what comes next in their, in their, uh, in their lives and what's possible for their lives, and space is sort of crucial for that. I think that, you know, over the course of our lifetimes, Space is going to be used in a dramatically wide range of ways to enable more and more people to solve the biggest problems on Earth, whether that's huge arrays of solar cells in space that allow us to take all the dirty energy production and put it up into a different place, or space elevators, or even planetary defense. These are all big projects, but there'll be a variety of other little projects that will sort of permeate through our society. And what's most important about that is that we'll be sharing the perspective of space um, with the next generation and enabling more and more people to have that space experience, that space perspective, and ultimately to help affect the world and change it for the better. Thanks very much.